Well, according to U.S. Customs and Border Protection, in an eight-day span between May 17th and May 24th, Border Patrol agents apprehended 10 convicted sex offenders in the Del Rio sector of Texas just after they crossed into the U.S. illegally. What's more, the majority of the criminals were apprehended in some of the most remote areas. Joining us now to talk about the situation at the border in nearby Arizona is Mark Burnovich, Attorney General for the state of Arizona. Mr. Attorney General, welcome back. Great to be with you again. Uh, as I just mentioned, border agents apprehended several convicted sex offenders in just a matter of days in Texas, and they were found in very remote areas. Does that concern you? As I know, your state also has a lot of remote areas where people can escape detection. Yeah, Tracy, this should concern everyone, not just me. As you know, we have multiple lawsuits right now against the Biden administration, and this is something we keep trying to tell folks that this is not staying in Texas. It's not staying in Arizona. It's going to affect this entire country. And between the cartels enriching themselves off of the drug trade and human trafficking trade going across our border, we know that there's been a record amount of sex offenders that have been apprehended. Just the, the four, uh, first four months of this year has equaled all the entirety of last year. We know we're seeing record amounts of, you know, 3,000 increase in the sector you're just talking about of sex offenders that have been apprehended. And furthermore, in one of our lawsuits about the Biden administration's failure to deport people with deportation orders, we know that there are literally people being released from state prisons in Texas and Arizona and other places that have been convicted of crimes like assault and kidnapping and arson and, and sex offenses that are being released because ICE is not picking them up and deporting them. So it, it's terrible. It's a terrible situation. It's a crisis. And it's going to be a tragedy because the Biden administration refuses to do anything, and they're going to endanger all of our neighborhoods, no matter where you live. You know, the last time you and I talked was about a month ago. Can you give us sort of an update of where things stand right now in your state? Have things gotten any better at the border? I would argue, argue no. In fact, they've gotten worse. We know that just the latest numbers um, we've seen is, is literally another 180,000 people have illegally crossed the border. Uh, just in the last month, the data was released. So since Vice President Biden has been appointed as the borders are, and just that period, about 460, 470,000 people that we know of, or we estimate, have crossed the border illegally. And Tracy, that's like the entire population of Minneapolis or Kansas City coming across mm -hmm. just since she's been the borders are. So the crisis has gotten worse. We know that there are people that are coming into this country that are voluntarily surrendering themselves because they know the Biden administration is de decriminalized and incentivized people coming here. But then you get the situation that you referred to in that uh, just a minute ago about these sex offenders who are trying to actively get away. We know the number of pursuits here. If I talk to the county sheriffs of every day now, there's pursuits going on with people that don't want to be apprehended. So you have this group of folks that we know about that want to be in this country. They think the Biden administration has you know, opened the door. But what about all these gotaways? What about all these people that are trying to evade capture? And then we find out that many of them are, are criminals, including sex offenders. That should trouble everyone. And shame on the Biden administration for not doing more to protect Americans' public safety. Well, we have about a minute or less, so, but I want to ask you this last question. Uh, I know that about 20 state attorney generals, including yourself, recently wrote to Education Secretary Miguel Cardona, basically telling him that you oppose teaching critical race theory in our schools. Can you tell us more about that and why you all feel that CRT is harmful to our children? Uh, we could do a whole hour on this, Tracy. The short answer is the Biden administration wants to give grant money and incentivize schools teaching essentially critical race theory and you know, uh, the 1619 project. That undermines everything this country stands for. It's not historically accurate. And I think that as AGs, we need to make sure the Biden administration knows we will sue them if they try to use our tax dollars in order to enforce this neo-Marxist indoctrination in our kids. Let's make no mistake about it. Critical race theory is all about undermining and dividing this country so people don't understand what the real American history is. This was a nation forged in liberty, forged in Judeo-Christian values, and we need to make sure students understand that, not that they think that somehow this is a terrible country with a terrible past. Are we a perfect union, Tracy? No. But the framers, what they created was a nation forged in liberty that guaranteed individual rights with an idea that rights don't come from government, they come from our creator. 
Well, unfortunately, we have to leave it right there. Mr. Attorney General, thank you so much for coming on. I always appreciate your time. Thank you, Tracy.